on earth was that? What's happening to my Bible? Where did that come from? Luke chapter 4, verse 4. And Jesus answered him, saying, It is written that man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word of God. What? And Jesus answered him, It is written, Man shall not live by bread alone. Where did by every word of God go? What's going on? I better not look up another one. Romans chapter 16, verse 24. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. Amen. Where did verse 24 go? Verse 23, verse 25. What happened? What? Where did my verse go? This can't be happening. I have to look up another verse. 1 Corinthians 1.18 For the preaching of the cross is to them that perish foolishness, but unto us which are saved is the power of God. What? For the word of the cross is folly to those who are perishing, but to us who are being saved, it is the power of God? That's not what my King James Bible says. What's happening? I have to find out. I have to look over in Ephesians. Ephesians chapter 3 and verse 9. And to make all men see what is the fellowship of the mystery, which from the beginning of the world hath been hid in God, who created all things by Jesus Christ. What? It happened again. And to bring to light for everyone what is the plan of the mystery, hidden for ages in God, who created all things. They took out by Jesus Christ. Why? Who would be so despicable as to change the word of God? Verse 14. For this cause I bow my knees unto the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. For this reason I bow my knees before the Father? Where did they take out of our Lord Jesus Christ? Who's doing this? I can't believe it. I have to find out. Colossians chapter 3 verse 6. For which things sake the wrath of God cometh on the children of disobedience. What? On account of these the wrath of God is coming? They took out on the children of disobedience. This can't be right. 1 Timothy chapter 6, verse 5. This verse condemns who's doing this. Perverse disputings of men of corrupt minds and destitute of the truth, supposing that gain is godliness. From such, withdraw thyself. Not again. In constant friction among people who are depraved in mind and depra deprived of the truth, imagining that godliness is a means of gain. Why doesn't it say, from such, withdraw thyself? I don't understand. Who would change the Holy Word of God, the King James Bible? Who would change something like this? Wait a second. I know who it would be. It's CERN. CERN. They're the ones that are doing it. Yes, that's right. CERN. C-E-R-N. Catholics and Evangelicals relying on the Nestles. You don't believe me, do you? Right here is the Nestle's text. Here it is, you can see it. The 27th edition. I can prove it to you. The text shared by these two editions was adopted internationally by Bible societies and following an agreement between the Vatican and the United Bible Societies, it has served as the basis for new translations and for revisions made under their supervision. There's the proof. The Catholics and Evangelicals are working together. On the board of editors, Carlo Martini is a Jesuit working with supposed Evangelicals to create these new versions, to change the King James Bible. CERN is behind it, in other words. And if that isn't enough proof for you, how about this? Vatican Council 2. 
page 112. But since the word of God must be readily available at all times, the church, with motherly concern, sees to it that suitable and correct translations are made into various languages, especially from the original texts of the sacred books. If when the opportunity presents itself and the authorities of the church agree, these trans translations are made jointly with churches separated from us, they can then be used by all Christians. It is CERN, the Catholics and Evangelicals, relying on the Nestle's text. CERN is behind the perversion of the King James Bible. I want to show you one other thing. I openly showed you two different sources where the Catholic Church admits that they are joining with evangelicals to change the text of the King James Bible. I've already showed you the proof. And you see, when you change the text and you no longer have a Bible that you can rely on, then you bring in your church traditions, like the Catechism. Or how about the Canons and Decrees of the Council of Trent? The Baltimore Catechism. Or how about the Church Teaches by Jesuit Fathers of St. Mary's College? You see, this is the real issue. When you reject this book as your final authority, you will start to add your own beliefs and feelings and traditions. You will become a Catholic in practice, in all matters of faith and practice. You might disagree on some doctrinal issues, the new version people, but in practice, you will become a Roman Catholic. Of course you will. Why? You don't have a an authoritative standard. A reliable authoritative standard. You don't have one. What you have is your feelings. Because you see, that's really all you have. You have no perfect Bible that you can put your hands on. So you start to add things to the scriptures. Just like the Roman Catholics do. But you see, when you are a King James Bible-believing Christian, you will say, this is the book. Thus saith the Lord, I believe it. I'm not going to change it. And of course, there's been a little bit of sarcasm in this video. Uh, the CERN thing with the Mandela effect is a military psyop, psychological warfare. It is intended to cast doubt into the minds of naive, gullible Christians. All right, the atheists seem to find it to be very funny to uh, lie to Christians and then they laugh when the Christians are good enough people to actually believe them. Uh, we're not gullible. Christians are not all gullible. I shouldn't say all of us. Or I should say all of us. You know, we're not all gullible. The fact of the matter is there are Christians that are very good-hearted people, very kind, affectionate people, and we want to see people get saved. And so when somebody comes out and lies to us, we will oftentimes believe that person at first. It doesn't make us gullible. It makes us compassionate, which atheists know nothing about compassion. Uh, they serve themselves. They are their own gods. And they're going to burn in hell and uh, unless they repent. But you see, that's the whole issue here. They're, this Mandela effect and the thing that they're changing the Word of God. I've said about this in other videos. Uh, they're not going to change this book. This book is eternal. God's Word is settled in heaven. Heaven and earth shall pass away, but my words shall not pass away. Jesus said that in Matthew chapter 24. You don't have to worry about this book. Uh, this book here is going to be around. Uh, in the time of Jacob's trouble, Revelation chapter 6 talks about people dying for their testimony, the testimony of Jesus, and for the word of God. So don't give me this nonsense. Well, the promise is about God's perfect word. That was the only the original autographs. The original autographs never existed in a single book form or as one volume of all the original autographs. So anybody that lies to you from this school of thought here, this Alexandrian school of thought, this Catholic school of thought, that constantly wants to take away an authoritative standard from you and place it in men and a uh, church, uh, they don't want you to believe in this book, you see. But Bible-believing Christians, we have an authority right there. Not me, not you, the book. Just as simple as that. And so now they're coming out with a very desperate little psychological warfare tactic. And their military is involved in this, the spook world and things. And they're coming out with this very desperate little tactic. Because you see, the Vatican has been sowing 
confusion for so long. God's not the author of confusion. You read about that in the Bible. The Vatican has been sowing confusion with version after version after version after version. Each one claiming to be more accurate than the next. Versions and versions and versions and versions and versions. They're creating a babble of Bibles. Lots and lots and lots of false Bibles. And yet the interesting thing about it is the Vatican has never once made a Bible translation from the Texas Receptus. Even though this crowd here will rant and rave about Erasmus being a Roman Catholic who wrote some of the early editions of what later became the Texas Receptus. If he was a Roman Catholic, a faithful Catholic, why didn't the Vatican ever use his text? Hmm? And why is it that the uh, Dewey Reims that came out as a complete Bible in 1610, one year before the King James Bible, why is it that this thing reads very similar to all these new versions? Many of the key passages that are changed that are different from the, the King James Bible that are in these lines up with this, which was around before the King James Bible. But these people that come out with this stuff here, they'll tell you it's brand new. They didn't have it available. It wasn't available. This information wasn't available to the translators of the King James Bible. Yes, it was. And they rejected it. Okay? God had his hand upon the translators of this King James Bible. That's why you can rely on this book. It's been tested and proved like no other Bible in the history of the world, including the original autographs. But you see, what has happened is, God is not the author of confusion. He gives you a book that you can rely on and then keeps it uh, accurate and in constant use for over 400 years. You can rely on God's book. Satan's books over here that are used by the Vatican and the workers of the Vatican, these ones have brought confusion. So people come out with this Mandela effect thing and they say, the Bible used to say such and such and it used to say this and it used to say that. And people go, oh really? I, boy, I don't remember that. I, oh boy, I, I guess maybe it did. They're counting on people being gullible is the whole thing. And if you're gullible enough to, fill, to, to fall for this whole nonsense of this Mandela effect, I feel bad for you. Okay, um, You're out of fellowship with the Lord if you're that dumb that you're falling for the thing of saying that you, you believe that some, a bunch of wacky little kooky scientists over in Switzerland can come up with a machine to alter reality. Okay, God has prophecies. We've been given a more sure word of prophecy. A bunch of little kooky scientists aren't going to change the future with the little machine. Right? God already wrote down what's going to happen in the future. And he put it in a book. And it's a more sure word of prophecy. You don't need to worry about it. All right? Heaven and earth shall pass away, but my words shall not pass away. If you don't know much about this whole Bible version issue thing over here, I suggest watching my video. Uh, the Real Bible Version Issue Exposed. You can watch that. It's on my secondary channel. And another book that I would recommend very highly is this one right here by David W. Daniels. This one will show you back here in the back, verse after verse after verse, where huge portions of Scripture are omitted. Where CERN, Catholics and Evangelicals relying on Nestle's, the Nestle's text down there in the bottom, the bottom of the heap where it belongs, they will, he'll show you how they changed the King James Bible. And by the way, the uh, changed Bible I was showing was this one right here, this little creative uh, video editing, the English Standard Version right there. All right, just another one of the many Vatican versions that have come out that has been translated by friends from the Vatican, and the Evangelical Church. Don't fall for this Mandela Effect thing. Stop putting comments in my, on my channel about the Mandela Effect has changed the Bible. The King James Bible has not been changed. I have Bibles from the early 1800s in my collection. They still read the same as my current King James Bible. 
Right, you can go back and listen to my old studies and things. You're going to hear me quoting the same verses. You can open it up. You can listen to preachers from the early 1900s, and they're going to be preaching and teaching and quoting the same verses that you have in your King James Bible today. So don't let a bunch of little military goons, a little bunch of spooks out there, uh, lie to you and start to put fear into your mind, making you think that your King James Bible has changed. And let me just say this to you little military psyop jerks. You're going to pay dearly for lying about the Word of God. All right? And you can laugh right now and get your little fun laughs but you're going to burn in hell and you're going to be screaming like little girls, the little girls that you are. All right? And you can attack me. You can attack other Bible-believing Christians, but you're going to answer to God someday. You better think about that. All right, something I need to add on here very quickly in case you don't know about CERN, the actual thing over there. Um, here you have the Vatican's website right here. Uh, to my venerable brother, you know, blah, 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 all this stuff. On the occasion of the International Convention, Jesus, our contemporary, which is taking place in Rome from 9 to 11, February 2012, at the initiative of the Italian Episcopal Conferences Committee for the Cultural Project. It goes on to say a bunch of stuff there. Okay, this is what we need to focus on right there. This group went here to this Alice thing, Vatican visit to Alice. Committee for the Cultural Project of the Italian Episcopal Conference. Here's the group. People from the Vatican. Vatican officials. You can see the priests there. These guys actually go to the CERN reactor. Right? And they're checking everything out. There you go. Alright? So you have these Catholic officials, official group from the Vatican going to see this whole CERN thing. And here's a very interesting picture. CERN Director General Rolf Huer met with Pope Francis at the Vatican on Friday the 30th of May. Right there. The Director of CERN. And I was being a little sarcastic in my video, you know, Catholics and Evangelicals relying on Nestles. But the CERN thing is a very wicked system. Um, so I'll show you a little bit of it here. But um, there's views of CERN. This is their press.cern, photos, images, life at CERN, you know, different things. There you have the Alice thing that these Vatican officials were there and checking it out. All right, and other weird things, antimatter and all this stuff, trying to mess with God's creation is what they're trying to do. Here you have a conversation with CERN's Rolf Dieter Huer there, if I'm pronouncing that correctly. Um, he was the guy, the director... Uh, general of the thing and that was a couple years ago now here's the newest director general it's a woman Fabiola Giannotti um, interesting sounds like a Italian Roman Catholic to me and Pope Francis warns large Hadron Collider could open gates of hell people getting all excited about this whole CERN thing some pictures of it. Again, you can, you know, you know, my fellow Christians from the Pope, yeah, I don't think so. But, you know, I'm not really looking into a whole lot of this stuff, because, again, I don't, I don't really take a whole lot of it seriously, because they're not going to mess with what God has created, what God has foreordained to come to pass. Um, and it's interesting, too, here you have the CERN courier, and they, the statue of the Indian deity Shiva at CERN was unveiled by His Excellency these people here. So they're putting up pagan goddesses and stuff like this. And it's just totally, completely satanic. So the, the real CERN uh, is definitely a satanic organization.